Hey guys, it's Michelle Visage, and welcome to a very special episode of What's Your Packin'? We've got Milwaukee's own James Mansfield. Hi everyone, welcome to my elimination. Hi, shapeshifter. Listen, somebody's gotta go first, right? I came in first. And how was that for you? Were you like, shh, What did it feel like? Obviously it wasn't good, but tell me like, you know, walk me through it. Well, I feel like the minutes I started the lip sync and things were falling off of me, and you just gotta Patti LaBelle through it and your shoes come off. Yeah. I was like, yeah, it could go either way here. Right? <laughs> and it didn't go the way you hoped it would go. It didn't. I was hoping either Kamora would fall off the stage or <laughs> slip on something. So let's talk a minute about how many times you auditioned. I've auditioned four times. Four times, and you finally got on. And what happens when you get the phone call? It happened I was in a parking lot of a grocery store uh -huh. next to my boyfriend, and I have to excuse myself from a moving car, and I get the assurance it's okay, he can know. Were you like, pull over, pull over? <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. So you were super excited about it. Um, I screamed internally, then I screamed extra. Great, and what were you hoping to bring to this competition? I was hoping to redeem campy queens. These are my summer diamonds. Summer diamonds and summer nuts. Why do they need redemption? Because I feel like campy girls get kind of a bad rep. Like they don't know how to dress themselves or they have to be put in a certain box. They have to present a certain way. And I wanted to change that. I wanted to be more of a representation of that old school drag flair with a new school face. Yeah, but I disagree with that because you've got the likes of Pandora Box who did really well. And then Jinx Monsoon is a campy queen won. So I personally don't think camp queens need re re redemption. Redemption. So yeah. to speak. I think maybe you would like to show your style of camp drag because I see some pieces back here, some yes. Miley Cyrus-esque pieces. <laughs> How would you describe your drag? Um, my drag is exactly how you see it, it's my art expressed. It's puppetry, it's fun, it's comedy, and it's funny. Tell us about this little Bianca Del Rio inspired finale piece you've got over here. I love that you say that. It is basically a representation of me, because my father was a clown for the Shrine Circus. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> so you did this because this is a tribute to your dad. Mm hmm Who is quietly supportive of my drag career. He's coming around now, and I wanted to pay homage to a very happy memory of my childhood. Which was? Which was just knowing my dad did this amazing thing and as a Shriner, you can't talk about it. Right. You're completely anonymous. It's just a really happy memory for me to think about. Do you make all your pieces? Absolutely. What do you hope to get out of this now? You did it, your name's gonna be out there, you're part of the family. What does James want to get out of this? Um, honestly, I never wanted to set the world on fire. I wanted to basically solidify a legacy for myself and bring enough attention to my other series that are important to me, like the drag history. I just think it's so important to preserve those old, old drag names. Just speaking them aloud brings them back again. Like? Like Charles Pierce, what Craig if, Russell. One of the original. Yes. Yeah. Listen, I am proud of you that you stuck it out, you got on this show, and you made it your own. Somebody's gotta go first, but you're gonna be remembered, and you're now part of the legacy. So thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you for giving your time to me today and sharing your beautiful cake clown dress and everything else you got going on. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hey, squirrel friend. When one video ends, just open up another one. It's called binge viewing. Go ahead. I support you.